In this film series, we look into five Celtic port towns that are connected and intertwined by the ferry routes that serve them. To get to know the history of these routes, the wonderful wildlife and the relationships that they continue to nourish, we meet up with Welsh and Irish locals who show us how they're inspired by this fascinating crossing. Welcome to Ports Past and Present, Fishguard to Ross Lair Harbour. From all my childhood voyages back to Ireland, only two things remembered. Girls afloat off Fishguard Quay, litter in a patch of radiance shed by the midnight boat. And at dawn, a low, dun coast opening to meet me. An oyster sky shaping above Ross Lear. I rub the sleep from my eyes. Girls pace the moving masthead. We're almost there. When I was, I think, about 19, that's when I went to work on the ships. I joined the ships, I think it was 1961 till 1965. We weren't home much at all then, only, well, we lived on the ship really. We just got home on Sunday nights, had to be back down on the ship Monday morning. My connection to Rossley was well, my father was over there, my grandfather, they were born there. My father moved over here, then he went back to Ireland. My grandfather, well, he lived in Ireland all his life, yeah. Obviously, Ross Lear and Fishguard, um, kind of, they, they developed because of that desire to link Southern Ireland with, with London. Their whole purpose is, is for that, and obviously that, that caused a you know, a, a mingling of, of, of the populations. And just thinking back to when we were in um, primary school, sort of the, the Catholic church and the Catholic um, school in Fishguard were largely generated because of that Irish population. Um, but when, so when we were in school, there'd be lots of people with parents or grandparents who were, who were Irish. But you'd always see yourself as, as Welsh. And I'd still, I'm very sort of, proud of like my Irish heritage but I would always class myself as as Welsh and I think those traditions just blended I mean I remember we had we had nuns teaching us and they taught us Irish dancing but also oh, yeah. Welsh folk dancing so mm -hmm. you you went to the Eisteddfod or something did you North Wales, yeah. so yeah. I think it was that that sense of it of it yeah just just being being mixed really I think we just sort of accepted it. I, I think mm. it's only as you get older and you've moved away where you think about how sort of unique it was, but that that sort of life just carried on mm. alongside whatever else that you were doing. I mean, obviously, lots of um, lots of family members and and you know friends were employed by the harbour, and it had a knock-on effect with other with other industries as well, with with restaurants and hotels and things. But um, yeah, just sort mm. of coexisted didn't it that it was there yeah and I think there was often the expectation sometimes that you know it, it was seen as one of the main employers wasn't it really at, at that yeah. time so uh... yeah. I met my husband on the St David uh, when he decided to come back for the season and work on the ferries it's the two ships on that. Is that the David? The, the David and the Andrew, that is, yes. Uh, in the winter, they didn't need the two ships. In the summer, um, they were working together because there was extra trips. But in the winter, then one would be anchored out in the bay uh, until it was needed again. These are Mum and Dad's discharge books, aren't they, Mum? Yes. Yeah. And as we were looking through them, you can see the dates when they were both on the the David together then, isn't yeah. it? And you've got the dates and that's, that sort of shows where, where you met really, isn't yes. it? But, but it, was, it was nice looking back and you could see that, that date, wasn't yeah. it? That you started in exactly May 65, wasn't it? And Dad in, yeah. in June and that's where, that's where you met. So today we're, we're going to, to meet Auntie Agnes, my dad's sister, um, and her daughter Lisa, our, our cousin. We haven't seen them for probably about two years now because we were going yeah, over quite, quite regularly. Um, so yeah, in that time it's going to be it's going to be so lovely to see them after all mm. after all that time.
Gulls white as a dream on the pitch of Fishguard Harbour. Paper cutouts, birds on a lacquered screen. The low coastline and pearl sky of Ireland, a long sleep in between. A sleep between two waking dreams. A haven, the landfall, is how, is it, how it appears, appears now. now. The child's eye unpuzzled, saw plain facts. I catch a glint from the darkness they're haunted by. I go visit my family in Fishguard, yeah, very regular. We go to them and they come to us. We're very close, really. Uh, Julie and Liz and Bob comes over to us and Marie. Marie's not a great traveller, so we didn't see her too often, yeah. From Ross Lear to Fishguard, I mean, uh, you go on board and then you go into duty free and you have a few drinks in the bar and then you have something to eat. And it's really, it's really part and parcel of a trip, really, of a holiday, you know. It's what you make it, I suppose, like everything. And then you arrive at Strumble Head and then you see Fishguard and then you're in the harbour in, in Goodick. It feels the same as being home, really, you know. It's, yeah, it's it no like different, no. I love the sea. I hit Ross Lair and I really, it seems as if I get light in the head. It's just, it's the sea, I, I suppose I'm cancer's my blood sign, but they say it's a water sign, I don't know. But anyway, I do feel great at the sea, you know. The boys from Fishguard, most of them grew up with me in Rosslare, if you know, and then they married people from Fishguard. So we all kind of knew one another, and it was very, it was, the camaraderie was great there, you know, and it was great fun. And they used to kind of joke one another and, you know, do silly things on one another, and, you know. I first met Michael, my husband, on uh, the ferry going to Fishguard. I was going over to my um, niece's christening. And uh, I met him and somebody introduced us and they said, this is Leo Todd's sister, so that was all right. And we spoke for a while and then I didn't see him anymore till I went to work <laughs> when I was working there then. And we met again and that started the whole thing off, yeah. I worked in the tourist office in Wexford. The office was open for about two hours. Well, it was greeting some of the passengers and if they were going to Ireland, they'd come over and see, you know, where we would think they'd like to go. And, and uh, my uniform was, uh, it was a dress, short. Well, not that short, but that was the fashion. And um, short sleeve, the little jacket and a nice hat, little, little hat. Yeah, it was lovely. It was a tweedy, Irish tweed, yeah. It was really exciting going over it. It did feel feel like an adventure, you know, with the excitement of seeing my gran and my great uncle lived in the same house as well. So that was always always special. <laughs> 